Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer. This is Wednesday, the 21st week in Ordinary Time. I'm glad you're here to join with me. Our morning prayer today begins on page 364. Let's join together in prayer today. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will proclaim your praise. Each day, O Lord, is a gift of your grace. Your mercies are new every morning. Guide our steps by the light of your word. Shield us from harm, and keep us from evil. The night is past, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. God, our shepherd, in all our wanderings and temptations, teach us to rest in your mercy and trust in your defense. Through him who laid down his life for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our hymn for today is on page 735, hymn number 21. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed. Now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are worthy at all times to be praised in joyful voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified throughout all creation. Our psalm today is Psalm number 78. O my people, listen to my instructions. Open your ears to what I am saying, for I will speak to you in a parable. I will teach you hidden lessons from our past, stories we have heard and known, stories our ancestors handed down to us. We will not hide these truths from our children. We will tell them to the next generation about the glorious deeds of the Lord, about his power and his mighty wonders. For he issued his laws to Jacob. He gave instruction to Israel. He commanded our ancestors to teach them to their children, so the next generation might know them, even the children not yet born, and they in turn will teach their own children. So each generation should set its hope anew on God, not forgetting his glorious miracles and obeying his commands. Then they will not be like our ancestors, stubborn, rebellious, and unfaithful refusing to give their hearts to God. Warriors of Ephraim, though armed with bows, turned their backs and fled on a day of battle. They did not keep God's covenant and refused to live by his instructions. They forgot what he had done, the great wonders he had shown them, the miracles he did for their ancestors on the plains of Zoan in the land of Egypt. For he divided the sea and led them through, making the water stand up like walls. In the daytime he led them by a cloud, and all night by a pillar of fire. He split open the rocks in the wilderness to give them water as from gushing springs. He made streams pour for out from the rock, making the waters flow down like a river. Yes, they kept on sinning against him rebelling against the Most High in the desert. They stubbornly tested God in their hearts, demanding the foods they craved. They even spoke against God himself, saying, God can't give us food in the wilderness. Yes, he can strike a rock so water gushes out, but he can't give his people bread and meat. Then the Lord heard them. He was furious. The fire of his wrath burned against Jacob. Yes, his anger rose against Israel, for they did not believe God or trust him to care for them. But he commanded the skies to open. He opened the doors of heaven. He rained down manna for them to eat. 
He gave them bread from heaven, and they ate the food of angels. God gave them all they could hold. He released the east wind in the heavens and guided the south wind by his mighty power. He rained down meat as thick as dust, birds as plentiful as the sand on the seashore. He caused the birds to fall within the camp and all around their tents. The people ate their fill. He gave them what they craved. But before they satisfied their craving, while the meat was yet in their mouth, the anger of God rose against them, and he killed their strong men. He struck down the finest of Israel's young men. The people kept sinning. Despite the wonders, they refused to trust him. So he ended their lives in failure, their years in terror. When God began killing them, they finally sought him. and re They repented and took God seriously. Then they re remembered with, that God was their rock, that God Most High was their Redeemer. But all they gave him was lip service. They lied to him with their tongues. Their hearts were not loyal to him. They did not keep his covenant. Yet he was merciful and forgave their sins and did not destroy them all. Many times he held back his anger and did not unleash his fury. He remembered that they were merely mortal, gone like a breath of wind that never returns. Oh, how often they rebelled against him in the wilderness and grieved his heart in that dry wasteland. Again and again, they tested God's patience and proved the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember his power and how he rescued them from their enemies. They did not remember his miraculous signs in Egypt, his wonders on the plain of Zoan, for he turned their lives into blood so that no one could drink from the streams. The vast swarms of flies to consume them and hordes of frogs to ruin them. He sent their crops to caterpillars. Their harvest was consumed with, by locusts. He destroyed their grapevines with hail and shattered their sycamore figs with sleet. He abandoned their cattle to the hail, their livestock to the bolts of lightning. He loosed on them his fierce anger, all his fury, rage, and hostility. He dispatched against them a band of destroying angels. He turned his anger against them and did not spare the Egyptians' lives, but ravaged them with the plague. He killed the oldest son in each Egyptian family, the flower of youth throughout the land of Egypt. But he led his own people like a flock of sheep, guiding them safely through the wilderness. He kept them safe so they were not afraid but the sea covered their enemies. He brought them to the border of his holy land, to this land of hills he had won for them. He drove out the nations before them. He gave them their inheritance by lot. He settled the tribes of Israel into their homes. The people tested, kept testing and rebelling against God Most High. They did not obey his law. They turned back and were as faithless as their parents. They were as undependable as a crooked bull. They angered God by building shrines to other gods. They made him jealous with their idols. When God heard them, he was very angry, and he completely rejected Israel. He abandoned his dwelling at Shiloh, the tabernacle there where he had lived among the people. He allowed the ark of his might to be captured. He surrendered his glory into enemy hands. He gave his people over to be butchered by the sword because he was so angry with his own people, his special possession. Their young men were killed by fire. Their young women died before singing their wedding songs. Their priests were slaughtered, and their widows could not mourn their deaths. Then the Lord rose up as though waking from sleep. Like a warrior aroused from a drunken stupor, he routed his enemies and sent them to eternal shame. But he rejected Israel's descendants. He did not choose the tribe of Ephraim. He chose instead the tribe of Judah, 
and Mount Zion where he loved. There he built this sanctuary as high as the heavens, as solid, as enduring as the earth. He chose the servant David, calling him from the deep pens. He took David from tending ewes and lambs and made him shepherd of Jacob's descendants, God's own people. He cared for them with a true heart and led them with skillful hands. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Today our reading is from the book of Tobit. Don't do what brothers... Don't do to others what you would have, what you would hate them to do to you. Don't drink too much wine or let drunkenness become a way of life. Give food to the hungry and clothing to the poor. Don't hesitate to give away your surplus to people in need. Seek the counsel of every wise person and do not reject useful advice. Bless the Lord God at every opportunity. Ask him to keep you on a straight path so that you will be successful in everything you do. Listen to me, my faithful children, and blossom like a growing by a stream of water. Send out fragrance like incense and sing a hymn of praise. Bless our God for all creation. Ascribe majesty to the name of the Most High. Give thanks with praise, with songs on your lips and with harps. All your works are good, O God, and whatever you command will be done. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In the morning, we call to you, O Lord, be merciful and hear our prayer. Hide not from us today. Give ear to our supplications. Enter not into judgment with us. Lift up our languishing spirits. Speak to us of your love and teach us to walk in your way. Lead us on a path that is straight. Preserve us unto everlasting life. Receive our offering of praise and unite us with all who call upon you in spirit and truth. And Father, the needs are many that your people call out to you. Thank you for the Bible study at the prison last night. Thank you that so many of the women came. Be with them, Lord. Bless them. Help them grow in their faith. Help them learn. I pray especially for the one gal that was there. I can't remember her name, but you know it. Who opened the Bible that she had. And it just happened that the text we used was already underlined. And she learned a great deal. Father, we pray for Kathy, who's had a surgical procedure and something went wrong, and she is now in the ICU. Father, we pray for healing. We pray for her family. We pray for her friends. My friend Barbara, who's very concerned about her, her friend. Father, watch over her. We know you love your people. And you know, we know that this all happened for her good and for the good of all who love her. Watch over Kathy. Grant her your grace and your peace, and your mercy. I thank you, Lord, for another day. Help us live this day according to your will. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we boldly pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God of redemption, your mighty hand crushes the power of the evil one. Lead us in ways of righteousness, that the power of your gospel may reign supreme in every corner of the earth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory of the Father's only begotten Son, full of grace and truth. And may the glory of the Lord rest upon us, and in His peace may we be blessed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. May God's help remain with us always and with our loved ones, both near and far away. May the Lord God order our steps and his ways and our day in his peace. And may souls of the faithful departed through the mercies of God rest in peace. Amen. My brothers and sisters, pray for those in need. We can always pray for people. The prayer of a righteous man will heal the sick, the scripture says. So let's pray for one another. We all know people that need our prayer, those that are sick, those that are in need, those that are homeless, those that are just upset and struggling with life. Be with them and be their friend. And may the Lord bless you this day.